all right all right all right so how's everybody doing today hopefully y'all doing good out there. that have- intro music was fire <laughs> okay first let's start there like that <laughs> intro music was fire oh thank you thank you thank you uh it took me a long time to create that uh that music right quick let me get a little round of applause for that thank you thank you thank you <laughs> so uh yeah it was uh one of those passion projects i was just sitting around just having a fun time doing things and uh you know i, I was like hmm let's make it happen let's let's i was bored <laughs> and obviously i had plenty of time to do it so uh so how are you doing today monkey i'm still recuperating <laughs> Can you talk about the energy that we had at that place, though? Oh, my gosh. It's so hard to describe if you weren't there. Like, yes. Like, oh, my God. Like, I'm literally still trying to, like, get back from it. Like, man. Like, and it's a good kind of drain because, like, I poured everything into it and got a lot back. Right. And I have to say that I was skeptical of, at first because I was like, all right, well, we're just going here to FinCon and we're going to do some things. But I'm not sure what I'm going to get out of it. You know, and it was like. This place is something different and it's hard to explain because it's like, you know, to have people that are, I know they always laughed about like, oh yeah, make sure you're around like-minded people, but for people to be like-minded and expand your horizon at the same time, I I just couldn't believe it. For me, especially, you know, this is my first FinCon, so I I had, and you know, I'm new to the personal finance creator space. I've only been in this space for about like, you know, give or take 18 months. Um, and everybody was like, oh, it's such a fun and welcoming environment. But like fun and welcoming to me, especially as a black woman, don't mean the same thing as everybody else. It means y'all will allow me to comfortably sit in the back as long as I don't ask questions. <laughs> but like people were pulling me to the front and pulling me into conversations. And oh my God, have you met Marquia? Like, hey, Marquia, tell him what you do. Like it was so welcoming and enjoy oh my god like i enjoyed myself so much like even outside of the actual convention we went and did karaoke i had a ball we went out to eat like you know and i just it i needed that it was more than just like a work trip like i feel Absolutely. like i it felt like a vacation low key like i feel rejuvenated <laughs> i came home ready to work like oh ooh i saw this and ooh i want to do that and da 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 like my little, I picked this up off one of them tables, man. <laughs> this thing almost full. I'm gonna have to pull out another one of the little freebies I took. <laughs> yeah, I had a because mine, I actually had to use mine as the one when they started doing the local meetups and we were just chatting around. I was like, I need everybody's email. We have to do something local, something separate uh, than what we have here because I mean, there's so much information that we didn't get a chance to sit down with everybody. It's so cool. Um, so what is uh so what are your your major takeaways from it that you got? Number one, um I, and I think the biggest thing that I got from this was that it doesn't matter how many followers I have. It doesn't matter how many likes or how many shares I get. It's the it's those comments and those DMs that be like you changed my life or you changed my family's life or I was able to buy my house because of you. I was able to get this car because of you. That's what matters. And as long as you focus on that and don't lose sight of that, no matter how big or how small your platform, that is what measures your success. Not the follower count, not the brand deals, none of that. The people that you help, which is the whole reason a lot of us get into this in the first place, right? The people that you help are who you know, that, that is what determines the success for me. Um, and I think, especially in the age of like everything is social media, it's really easy to lose focus of that because you see everybody with larger platforms than you and you like, that's not fair. How do I get that? Like, I want that. My information is just as important. Why isn't everybody listening to me? Right. Um, and so it was very, it was definitely a very kind of cathartic release of those expectations that I put on myself. Oh man, yeah, because uh, what's the name? Chris Browning was actually talking about that on his stand up at the main stage, and I had to say, like, I've been following this dude when he first started, and I'll constantly see him on Instagram. I was like, dude, I love your stuff. I like your studio setup. I was like, why do you have a teleprompter in your house? You don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, you really asked him that? Yeah, that's asked him that. <laughs> he was like, you know, I gotta upgrade. <laughs> it's like, but you, your content is so short in the time you're supposed to be popping popcorn. Like, do you really need all that? But, you know, it was a good time chatting with him because I caught up with him. There was something off site called the uh, podcast movement. And I wasn't never heard of it, but somebody else invited me. So I'm like, let me check this out. And he was happened to be there the day before the main stage. And that's how I caught up with him. But I didn't realize how tall he was either. So it was actually pretty cool. I bumped into him by accident, actually. He was one of the first people I walked up to. Mm -hmm. Um, and like spoke by myself. I was actually talking to the guy who runs Do You Even Blog. This was after they did their panel. Yeah. Um, and I was walking up to him and talking, and he walked past, and I looked, and in my head, I was like, I didn't say it out loud. Right. That looks like that looks like the guy from Up Popcorn Finance. Right. <laughs> and I didn't say nothing. I'm still talking to the guy. And he was like, That's Chris Browning. And he said it's so nonchalant. And I was like, No, yeah. it's not. And he's like, I swear. He was so like he had on like a face mask and a hat and like sunglasses. Right. So then he started taking all his stuff off. And I was like, oh my God, that's Chris Browning. <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous. And so like he introduced this and like I talked to him and we took a picture together. And I was like, uh -huh. like I literally listened to like, oh my God, this cannot be happening right now. Like I, I want to be you when I grow up. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. and like, cause the thing about it, it seems like he didn't even really, um, had not, I can say it does it wasn't feel like how everybody like brag about themselves. It was just kind of like, hey, you know, we here to help. And that was the biggest thing I noticed about this financial community. It's like, yo, we all here to help and reach out to everybody. And no matter what the problem is, like you said, no matter how many followers you have. I think I gained like six followers since the show. Like since the thing of I was like, hey, you know what? It's six extra people I get to reach out to. Exactly. And help out, so. Exactly. And that's a very healthy way of looking at it too, because it keeps you from thinking that you failed. It right. keeps you from measuring your current chapter against somebody else's chapter 43. Like, you know, <laughs> if you don't focus on what they got going on and if you kind of have that tunnel vision on the people you're helping, it'll the views and stuff will come. I mean, people will always need this information. So people will always be coming around, you know, to give it to you. Yeah. It's just, you know, we got to stay focused and we just got to keep pushing. That's the biggest thing. Definitely. Because um, even with this, uh, this podcast, because I was listening to what he was saying, like when he asked the question, like his graph that he posted up on the thing, he was like, yeah, when I first saw it, they were, the numbers were so minute that you don't even see it to the point where his smallest numbers were in the thousands. And it's like, well, how do we get there? You know what I'm saying? It was so cool. Um, who was the the biggest uh, person that you bumped into that you was like, like almost like a, a fan girl over? I cried when I met Patrice Washington, and I actually have a picture of it, and I put the picture on Instagram because, oh. like, you know, when she got on stage, she talked about her on the floor on the bathroom moment. Mm -hmm. But she just like cried and cried and she felt like it was all over. And I remember my on the floor on the bathroom moment. She was the voice that picked me up. So mm -hmm. to that was like a, such a full circle moment to go from that was the voice I needed when I was on the floor. And now there's somebody out there somewhere who thinks I'm that voice for them. Right. And I have her to thank for that because she got me through my own crisis which kind of propelled me on this journey of learning as much as I can and telling everybody who will listen. Right. And so it was definitely like a full circle moment. Like all she did was turn around and look at me and I bust out crying. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, oh. I bust out crying and so then I calmed down. And then she was like, she, so um, for those of you who don't know or didn't get an opportunity to meet with me, my uh, business cards are a credit card, like an uh, actual PVC plastic, like nice. embossed letters and like like numbers and everything. And so she turned around. And she was like, you're the girl with the credit cards. Boy, I start crying again. <laughs> <Boy."> <laughs> but for but, her to know you, and that is so, man. And then like, what? She pulled her phone out. She followed yeah. me on Instagram. She was oh. just like, she gave me words of encouragement, told me how good of a job I was doing and, mm -hmm. you know, how I'm making a difference. And, and like, she really helped put it in perspective to me. But it's crazy because to me, she's up here. She's the, like the Kim Kardashian of personal finance for black women. And so to have her to take time out to pour into me, Man, that experience in and of itself, that's something I will never forget. Like, she was so humble, so, so graceful, so, so nice. Like, 
Oh, I will never forget that. Yeah, we um we definitely gotta make sure we get out there again. Um, cause I'm. Oh, I'll... you know, I want I want ticket. I want to take it the next year. Oh, congrats! Hey, I went to the tacky hey. tourist party. Let's go. I got some. Uh... <laughs> That's right. That is nice. Yes. Let's get it. Because like um, you know, we don't that is awesome because can you tell everybody like how did you actually win your ticket? Okay. So at the end of every FinCon, apparently, there's a tacky tourist party. Okay, mm-hmm. so I so what happened was we went to the very last main stage. Um, and it was like, everybody look under your seat. It's a free ticket. It was not a free ticket under my seat. So then it was like, well, stick around. You know, you're going to get an email in a couple minutes because they announced that FinCon next year is going to be in New Orleans. And it was like, you're going to get an email with the price for the ticket. Child, them fucking pro passes. Well, I'm sorry. I forgot that. <laughs> no, <laughs> them pro passes were $500. Right. I start. I was in a parking garage because, you know, I drove down to Orlando. Boy, I started my car in with the Walmart so quick. I said, no, sir. No, sir. <laughs> So everybody said that, you know, the tacky tourist party, who, you know, the people who dress the tackiest get free tickets. Yeah. And me personally, I had the best outfit, but I lost, unfortunately. Aww. But the in me losing, um, everybody kind of like advocated. And I was like, hey, man, like, you know, I, I tried. Do I get something? So they actually ended up giving me a ticket to next year. Look, she said I was definitely the tackiest. <laughs> 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 no, for real. Okay. So because I was up under them seats. You hear me? Yeah. I- under them seats. So when I saw how expensive them tickets was, I was like, five hundred dollars for a ticket, maybe like fifty bucks on a tacky outfit. And right, so right. I went all out, and it worked out in my favor. I got look. It's all about how bad you want it. I tell my clients all the time, how bad you want it, what you willing to do for it. So yeah, I wanted to go to New Orleans, and so now I'm going. Now, and the cool thing about it is that I do have a photo with you, um, right before you got your ticket, and I have to say like. <laughs> <laughs> your face was priceless because <laughs> I was like, "Am I the last person that took a photo of you before you?" Probably, <laughs> probably, <laughs> probably. Oh man, we had uh, and granted, obviously, it, it had the like the dark red or whatever and everything like that. Um, man, I know we skipping so many days on that, <laughs> and I <I'd> say, <laughs> "Thank you." Oh, yeah, congrats again. Yes, Tiff. Uh, if you guys don't know about uh, Tiffany from Money Talk with Tiff, please definitely tune in. But um, she's actually been doing some great things. Um, but again, so for people don't, who don't know you, let's let's dive into you a little bit because, you know, they were like, hey, who's this random person with Anthony up here on the show? <laughs> My fans like, who is this? But uh, can you explain a little bit about yourself? Uh, so everybody can know. So my name is Markia Brown. I'm also known as the Money Plug on social media. Um, I am a certified financial education instructor and a board certified credit repair specialist. Um, I started with a credit repair company. And then I was like, I can't fix everybody. So I'm just going to start posting tips so y'all can do this yourselves. And then it just, over, what happened was I got drunk. This was like, <laughs> this was like New Year's Eve 2020. And I got drunk and I got on TikTok and I was like, I'm going to post 365 credit tips next year. Like, and then I started posting them and then people started catching on. People started holding me accountable. Like, hey girl, where's my tip? Like mm. you're slipping today. Where's my tip? Right. And so like, it just kind of snowballed from there. And it took one video, <laughs> no. one video and I went from like maybe a hundred and something followers to I got my first thousand. Mm-hmm. And then I started going live and I, I it just kind of like snowballed from there. And then eventually I got selected for the Black TikTok Creator Program. Um, oh, and people. yes, and that like they've really helped me develop as a content creator, making sure that I'm providing value to my community, how to build a community. And now I'm 200K strong on TikTok. Um, I do a lot of free workshops um, with for like finances. We not calling them budgets no more, y'all. We call them spending plans. So we do spending plans. We talk about, um, oh, thank you. Yeah. We talk about how um, your spending affects your credit in the long run. And if you're not managing your money properly, you're not managing your credit properly. Um, and in fact, one of my more popular workshops, you're going to laugh at the name. Everybody always laughs at the name. I um, always come up with really catchy <laughs> names. So I have two really popular workshops. Mm-hmm. One is called Hood Niggas Need Credit 2. 
<laughs> <laughs> that one started as a program for um, recently released felons who had been incarcerated for long periods of time, and it's helping them kind of reacclimate to society financially. Right. And the other ones is called. I don't know if you're gonna let me say that without bleeping it out. You can go, no, we just okay. come right on in. It's called bad bitches need budgets. Bad so <laughs> you know, it's cool that so and so paid for your trip and all that stuff, but you need to still make sure you got money just in case you don't want to kick out no, you know what, you can still pay your way back home. Right. And so you know, we started focusing on making sure that no matter what your income is, you know where it's going. Um, and I think that was the biggest. That's the biggest difference that I've noticed in my audience. It's not just about you know. Well, I want this off my credit. I want that off my credit. It's about understanding how is your credit score calculated? What accounts provide value to your life and your credit report? How to analyze the difference between accounts that make sense and accounts that you just want it because everybody else had it. And really understanding the psychology behind those decisions as well. Evaluating your relationship with money, mm -hmm. um, kind of forgiving yourself for the things that you didn't know um, and, you know, not making those decisions again. So it's been a really crazy journey the last 18 months, but um, I love it. I would not trade it for nothing in the world. Oh, man, that is so awesome. Um, I know you just see me like play around with these screens, but that's so cool because I can't wait till it's over because I'm actually how you did that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, I'm always willing to help and and share because uh, one of the guys, one of my mentees, uh, Eric Barnes, uh, is in in the show and he actually, uh, man, he he has this whole story. I've been telling him like he should go, uh, but for next year, but he's he's hesitating. I'm gonna tell him to get on there. Do God. it. Right. Do it. Like, I'm telling you, like, don't don't hesitate. Like when I tell you, you know, it was a lot of people who hadn't even launched their companies or their brands and stuff who were at Silicon and they felt so inspired while they were there. They posted their very first TikTok or their very first Instagram post. When I tell you that was such a Man, I I know we keep saying it was a very welcoming community, but that oh, yeah. feeling, it's like going to your family reunion after not seeing them since you was little. And yeah. it's like everybody was, oh, my God, hey, what are you up to? Talk to us. Catch us up. How can we help? What can we do? And I, I really feel like I was missing that. You know, COVID really had me feeling mad, isolated and really alone in my journey um, with my business and with my brand. And so going to FinCon was, man, such an amazing experience. Like I, even if you're not in the personal finance space, listen, go. Like, yeah. I was telling everybody, go. <laughs> so. Yeah, because, uh, um, and I was talking to somebody that um, they really in the budgeting, but they don't have their own business and they actually working on trying to write a book and so forth. So I was telling them, I was like, even if I had somebody that that would kept pinging me and pulling me to the side because she was looking in to get in the podcast. And there was, I think uh, it's another company that out there that does a different mixer. I have the Rodecaster Pro on my end. Um, but there was another mixer. You got out. money. Oh, oh you see the mic <laughs> Pro. Yeah, because I was like, because I was telling her the mic that I have, I was like, the mic that I have cost the same amount of uh, the mixer that they had over there. I forgot what the name of the mic was. I mean, the mixer was. But um, so she was like, how do I get started? And I was like, well, you don't need that. Because <laughs> I was like, I started my show like just with my cell phone at the kitchen table. Like, and that's what we did. Hey, hey. Listen, I think this was like $20 <laughs> on Amazon. These headphones go to my PS5. Um, nice. Like, nice. you know, my camera... So this right. is actually my iMac. So I did splurge a little bit, you know, okay. once I was making some money. Yeah. But I actually had my regular laptop and my camera was a Sony ZV-1 I got on Black Friday. Like, nice. it was so cheap. Like, you don't have to have top of the line everything to start. Mm -mm. And honestly, I tell people all the time, I love that whole started from the bottom that we hear. Like, I love being able to look back and see my growth, not only content-wise, but man equipment wise because going back and looking at my videos i was shooting in my bathroom in germany in tiktok <laughs> on tiktok when i first started nice. so seeing that growth to now look i got 
got a whole setup. You feel what I'm saying? I got yeah, a, I like the blue wow. light. Wow. You feel what I'm saying? I got, I got all paper. You feel what I'm saying? Let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at like, that. Like, you look at my, and they real plants too. I've been keeping them alive just because they're in the back of my video and I don't want nobody to laugh at me. Right. But right. like, you know, I like to have it. Let's do your solo joint so we can see that. Yeah, Period. Yeah. Oh, girl. <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, I got a ring light now, you know, so right. like I'm adding as I go and as I need it. But the biggest thing is that you have to start because you will never be 100 percent ready. If you keep putting conditions on your beginning, you're never going to start. You have to start somewhere. You have to. And, and that's the thing. It's like, you know, we all afraid of, of taking that next step and putting ourselves in that arena where like we don't match, which goes back to how do we get over that hurdle? And I think somebody in one of the talks said in order the way to get over those hurdles or those unknowns is to build a habit around it. Take your fears and make a habit. And I was like, Poof. and my show is about building financial habits. Right. Oh. <laughs> so it's like, how can I take people's fears and make that into a habit? All right, cool. You're afraid to take your first step. Well, then how about you take the first step of making a bed in the morning? All right, now you're afraid to go running. Well, how about you go walking first? Like, just start building those habits on a on a one or two thing. And that goes back to, that brings up the next question on what I had was, um, you know, I had on here. Like, what did I learn from FinCon? So I'll let you go. Or I can go first and then. Yeah, you go first because okay. I learned a lot. I got to pick my time. <laughs> you, you go first. Right. So the first thing I learned, um, and the, I don't know why so many people left so early, but the last speaker was the one that spoke to me the most. When she was talking about flow your business, I was like, if y'all out there, Bernadette Joy, if you're listening to this, because I, I did post it up on Instagram, if y'all kept me, seeing me looking down, if you're listening to this, Bernadette Joy, look her up. She said, flow your business. And one of the things that I did when I first got home, I changed my availability for my podcast. She was like, limit your availability. And one of the things that I did was I limited the amount of time that I do for interviews. I made sure that I, I used to be available every day of the week. I was like, you know what? I don't care. I'm here for somebody to co contact me. Did you know I was so upset? I left work early trying to come home to make sure I could have a podcast yesterday. This person did not even show up. I stayed on for like a whole extra half hour just waiting. But I was actually, you know, doing stuff. But I was like, you know what? I'm going back to what Bernadette said. Limit my availability because they're going to make sure they're there. And, you know, I've, you know, I was like, do I give this person another chance? So I send them an email, say, hey, sorry, we missed each other. I'm not sure what's happening in their real life. But I did feel some kind of way, but that was one of the biggest takeaways that I had amongst other things. And um, she said, I wish I had my notepad um, around here. I wish I did. I know I have it somewhere. But that's one of the major things that I remember and I know I will never forget was uh, to limit my availability. And it was funny because like right, it was crazy, like right before we went and saw Bernadette, I was mm. talking to some ladies, we were eating lunch, we had went out to the um, the food trucks outside and we were talking, I told them like, yeah, I'm starting to get better with managing my time and all this other stuff, like I don't work weekends now, Fridays I'm off, but yo, she said that and like she actually showed us her schedule, bro, when I say I literally logged into my Acuity <laughs> app, literally right there. And was like, oh, yeah, I'm off Mondays. I'm off Fridays. Don't ask. Don't Thursdays, ask. Yep. I'm off after 12 o'clock. Don't yep. ask. I'm not changing my schedule. Like, I I also, and this was something I incorporated once I came home, because like you, I'm making these appointments, and it's like, people not showing up. People don't appreciate or value my time. When I tell you I sat down and I drafted up a missed appointment fee, and I sent it out to everybody. And now in order to book an appointment with me, you have to sign that you agree. If you do not show up, you get an invoice. You don't pay that invoice, then you will never get another appointment with me, period. Go. My there time is just as valuable as yours. Now, if I wouldn't have shown up to an appointment that you scheduled, you'd be pissed. You'd be dragging me on social media. Yep. And so I expect that same respect from the people who book with me. And, you know, one of the other things that she said was... <laughs> 
she matter of fact, she said the same thing you said. Face fears with habits. Yeah, and, that's yep. And one of the things was like, and she was like, what habits do you want to incorporate into your business? And for me, it's show up. Yeah. There are days when I don't want to show up for my business. I'm tired. I don't want to. I don't <laughs> feel like it. And I also struggle with mental health. I'm a vet. I'm retired army. Um, and oh, I struggle with PTSD. I ain't do nothing. I tell people that all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, I have PTSD. And so for me, like, you know, when I'm getting overwhelmed and I'm feeling very overstimulated, I shut down and I don't want to post on TikTok or post on Instagram. But the one half, you know, she was like, when you don't want to do something, make a habit. So right. now what I have is I always have seven drafts sitting in my uh, sitting on my app on TikTok. OK, that gives me seven days to get my life together. And so mm -hmm. that way I'm st that way if I don't feel like it, I still have something that I can post and right. I'm going to be able to show up for my business. But as those drafts wind down, once I'm out, I have no crutch to fall back on. But my habit is that I will always show up for my business because I'm always it's not even just for the business. I'm showing up for the people who depend on me for this content. I like and I think that was the habit that was the hardest for me because, you know, I was doing too much, but at the same time, I I didn't have the right systems in place to do enough. So it was like I was overexerting myself, posting content everywhere and doing everything when I can work smarter, not harder and just have drafts for the days where I'm really not feeling it instead of pushing through that. You get what I'm saying? So I prepared for the days when I'm not ready. Oh, look, preparing for the off days. I, yeah. I prepared. I literally came home and recorded seven TikToks. And now every two weeks, I will re-record these videos depending on what's going on, what's the trend. Um to make sure that I have these on those days when I'm just not feeling it or when mentally I'm not there so that I always show up for the people who depend on me for content. And oh man, she just really had me reevaluating a <laughs> lot of stuff. I really can't see how people left early. I don't. Cause like yeah, she yeah. was the one that hit the hardest to me. It was, we was the people in the front. Yeah. We, were looking at us. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we was yelling like we was in church. Girl. Oh yes. Oh y'all over there. Okay. I was like in the I was in the uh I was in the center row. So you guys were over there. I was like, okay. Yeah. Right. Was, like we was at like church. Okay. Yeah. Like we really was because she was literally speaking to me. I felt like you know how when you go to church, you feel like the pastor like teasing you or picking yeah, yeah. on you. That's yeah. what it felt like. It felt like she went in my in my emails and was minding my business. That's what it felt yeah. like. And one of the things I, I was listening to somebody else that said uh because they actually helped retired their wives or their significant others doing uh, the podcast or so forth but they were doing it on youtube and they were saying it's like you know they don't balk record or somebody said that they don't balk record and the reason why they don't balk record because they feel like they're not giving value to their audience but i'm thinking money is evergreen if you're not producing content that's good for six months down the road then what are you doing talking to the news like we're not newscasters i'm sorry I'm a balk record. <laughs> it's like, I can't sit up here. And, and it's it. so funny because I'm not, I'm not. So we call it batching in okay. um, like short form content. We call it batching. I don't typically batch. Seven is still a lot for me. Um, that's a week's worth of content for me. That's why I re-record them every two weeks because mm -hmm. the trends change. But I typically don't batch create content. And it's not because like for me, it's not. Because I post two types of content. I post some that's on trend. So it'll be like a trending sound or dance or something like that. And then there's the one where I'm just talking and providing that value. Right. And so the videos that I have that are batch created are my value videos. They'll last a little longer than a trend or something like that. And so for me, it just... For me, batch creating just gave me the heebie-jeebies because, like, my anxiety, that, pre that pressure is building. Like, the pressure of having to create all that content at one time and to get everything across. Like, I don't know. I'm scared I'm going to forget something. What if I leave something out? What if I exclude somebody? So, for me, it was, like, a mental thing as far as why I don't batch. That, and I'm lazy. I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> I'm not about to sit there and record all that stuff all day. Yeah. Um, but, you know... After talking to a lot of people, that was what made me be like, you know what? I can do seven videos. Like, all right, girl, you, you're not too good to at least do that. Right. Like, you know, and eventually, you know, you never know. It might build up to that. But I, they said the same thing you said. Our content never changes. Yeah. It's very rare that a policy or a law or something will come out that really change um, 
what we're saying. It's all about how you say it and the different ways that you can say it, I think, that prevents people from batching. Nice. Yeah, because uh, I got to say, for me, it's long form. I do a lot of batch recordings, but obviously it's with guests on and stuff like that. And obviously I do live shows now. So at um, and that's one of the things that I kind of started getting into because I enjoy the interaction of the people just like live right now. So it's like um, I want to do take a moment to kind of say hi to everybody that's here right now. So we got Highway 54, which is Eric and uh, and his team over there. So he's actually about to get married. And I was like, dude, thanks for calling me on the show before you go. like he was on with me like a little earlier before we went live. And I just want to say thank you for, for showing up before your, your actual wedding and congrats on that. Um, we got Tiff in the audience. Uh, Money Talk with Tiff. Definitely check out her YouTube. She, I mean, even if you her YouTube, her Twitter, everything up in there. Um, we have Jama Wealth. Um, I'm not familiar. I do apologize, but I think. I am. I love her. Okay. <laughs> well, tell me a little bit more about it. I'm sorry. I don't. So I actually just started following her. So I just like I, matter of fact, I think it was like it was either right before FinCon or like during FinCon when I started following her and like watching her content. Um, I've never watched under her long form. I'm sorry, everybody. I'm a Instagram TikTok girl because I got a thousand kids, so life comes at me quick. <laughs> so, so but I've been watching her content like that on Instagram. She's amazing. That is her Instagram. So, oh my god, she's so she's so dope. You know, all right. I'll make sure I'll I'll, uh, I'll subscribe as well. Uh, so we have Angel up in here. Yes. I, so my friends call me Coke, so don't don't worry about it. I was that. wondering because I was like, uh uh, <laughs> what you <laughs> no, no, no. It's uh one of my old nicknames. Uh a long time ago. I'm sorry, Floyd. He gonna kill me. Floyd, you know how you mess up names all the time too, so don't blame me. <laughs> Listen, girl, after like number three, it's like kids are like Pringles. Once you pop, you just can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we got uh we got Landy up in here. We have uh who else we got up in here today? We got Jamal. Jamal's in here, one of my good buddies. So it looks like we uh a little bit over the, the half the half hour mark. You ready for some drinks? Are y'all ready for drinks? Just type in drinks in there. You ready for drink? You got a drink? I got Pepsi. Okay. Okay, I drink. Listen, I drink for that. I can't. Anybody right, who follow me know one thing about me. I'm finna have a Pepsi. Hey, there you go. You better get some sponsorships, right? No, okay. <laughs> Let's look, get look, look. right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on, people. Let's go. All right, everybody. That so, was so cool. Oh, you like that? <laughs> oh, my God. This is amazing. And yeah, this is every Wednesday. So, you know, I want to welcome everybody here. Y'all know what it is. So tell me what there, what y'all drinking. Jamal, you better not say Hennessy because Hennessy goes with everything. So, all right. So what I'm trying today is a pumpkin spice craft soda. You know, I I'm, figured I'm, I'm a head out. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a head out. <laughs> I'm a head out. Not the pumpkin. Not you too. Not you too. This is the only thing I was trying it. Okay, and I already bought a case of four. So a case? A case. You didn't even get a single <laughs> serving. You got a case. All right, but what we're gonna have on top of that? Everybody know we gotta have the Amsterdam up in here today. So we're gonna go in. Oh, totally. <laughs> Chest. Jesus, you trying to put hair on your chest? Oh my God! I don't know that much. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. All right. Now they usually see me poor, but then they want to see more, and I'm like, dude, I gotta go to work tomorrow. So <laughs> that's what you're <laughs> to me Yeah. So I gotta see you drink this because I want to oh. see your face. I gotta see your face because pumpkin and New Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, let me let me see it. If I can zoom in on my face here. Let me, let me got not not too bad. No, that's what people yeah. say when they try and be nice. <laughs> <laughs> got what the tail way, you know. Try try to hold it back. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm an apple girl. I did, I'm not okay. drinking the Kool Aid. It's fall. I'm apple everything. So if y'all ain't tried that new apple macchiato down at Starbucks, go get it. It's fire. I can't do pumpkin. 
apple ma- macchiato. It's like an apple something macchiato. So good. I get it iced. They have okay. this like a, it's like an apple oat milk, milk macchiato or something like that. Mm-hmm. I just can't do pumpkin. I grew up on like hot apple cider and apple cider donuts and going apple picking and stuff like that in the fall. So pumpkin. <laughs> <You're> like, <"Ugh." laughs> Hey, I mean, it started to grow on me after a while. It's like, oh god, no oh, god. Yeah, it's about that time, you know what I'm saying? Because it is spooky season. It is spooky. Season. <laughs> it's spooky season. Oh man, they drinking Uncle Nearest. Okay, so this is going to be fun. Um, so since it is your first time on my show, live even, um, which most people are really afraid of live, so. I do have a small segment which is called Pod Decks. Have you ever heard of them? No. no. Well, then, hold tight. This episode is powered by Pod Decks. Pod Decks are unique interview questions and episode starting prompts in the palm of your hand. So, whether you're a new podcaster or existing broadcaster looking to grow your audience and have more meaningful conversations, you're going to want to check out Pod Decks. Now, if you want to get 10% off your order right now, you can go to poddex.com and type in coupon code. What's the code? Yes, that's the code. Check out poddex.com. Take your podcast to the next level. I need to step <laughs> my game up. What is this? Oh, man. Yeah, so. Pod decks for you guys who are interested in getting some pod decks. Make sure you go to poddex.com, use promo code wallet again. So, all that footage that you saw, that was something that I curated and put it up together with some audio. Um, so what I usually do is have some music for the background as we go through these, and I actually do take questions. So, we're gonna have some phone callers coming in soon. For those of you who know the number. Uh, hold tight, don't call the number just yet because I gotta get everything going. Um, but the question is if you had a day where calories don't count, but you could only eat three foods, what would they be? So I don't know, you, you know what I look like, everybody else don't. <laughs> I'm like a hundred pounds soaking wet, so calories never count in this household, amen. Um, hey. <laughs> so, so for me, well, I'm lying. I do have diabetes, so I do normally have to be careful. But mm-hmm. for me, um, I'm very specific. Oh, that's the name of the drink. Oh, it's yeah. so good. Apple milk. For me, the, the three the three foods I want, and I just had this today, actually. So it's the carne asada fries at Wands. And I can only get it from this one particular restaurant like that's literally right outside of Langley Air Force Base. Mm-hmm. It's literally like this big in there, but the food is amazing. So the carne asada fries, mm-hmm. um, I want... Griddle cakes from McDonald's. I know that sounds really weird, Ooh, but I just okay. want the griddle cakes. I yeah. don't want nothing else. <laughs> I just want the griddle cakes. Um, and what's the third one? Oh, this gotta be a good one. This gotta be a good one. Something I can never have. <sighs> okay. I want a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts. And I'm not, and I don't want to shit. And they gotta be, I'm talking like hot light hot. on, yeah. like dripping down your hands when you bite into it. I, oh, I want that. I want that. Those are the three things. Okay, so for me, the three things would be I gotta be the meat lovers pizza. Like a Chicago joint. I had that. <laughs> yes. <It's, laughs> I mean, it took me two days to finish one, but when I went to Chicago, I just flew to Chicago just for the pizza for a weekend. I was like, I'm, I'm just here for the pizza. Hashtag goals. Oh, yeah. Well, when you get those travel points, you just go. Right. <laughs> Um, so I got that. The second thing that I wouldn't mind having calories didn't count. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to roll with you on that. Those boys don't I? So they they are so fresh, like right off the belt when they put the stick in it, just to kind of so they don't. Yes. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. And when they hand um, it to you, when the bottom of the box oh. is kind of bowing a little bit because it's warm. <laughs> oh my god. Let me see. I got something. Yes, this is gonna get get a little little sonic ring up in that joint. Yeah, they're so good. Um, and then the third thing, I will have to say, 
a Philly cheese steak with everything on it. Oh. No mushrooms, though. Then it ain't everything. Oh, come on. I can't do that. No, what is wrong with your taste buds? No, I can't oh, be... What is wrong with you? You know what? If they chop it up finally, I don't want them like all in there. You know what? It was so funny about that. My husband, <laughs> <laughs> my husband don't like onions, right? Right. So whenever we go somewhere, he'll lie and tell people he's allergic to onions just so they won't put it on none of his stuff. But if it's finely chopped and like he can't like visually see it, he will fuck it up. It's like <laughs> he will eat that food. Like it's so funny because he'd be like, I don't like onions. I hate onions. It's nasty. But then I'm I'm sprinkling onion powder on everything. I'm chopping up onions real small, I'm putting mm -hmm. it in stuff, and he just be eating it. No problem. Just like no the meatloaf. Back in the day, yes, <laughs> yes, exactly like that. Yeah, if Do you're you not getting them from off? Philly, then you're on Philly cheesesteaks. Oh, that's true. That's true. Listen, yeah. I'm from Baltimore. Well, I didn't drove up to Philly for a cheesesteak before. Yeah. <laughs> Landy, Landy's from from Philly. See a Philly girl there. Yeah, that's good to know. But yeah, I haven't. Yeah, I have been there a couple times to kind of see the Rocky Steps and everything like that. So I think the last time I went was Made in America last year. I'm I'm obsessed with music festivals. Wait a minute. Speaking of festivals, look what I got in the mail today. Okay. Isn't this so cool? What? Hold on. Let it's me. It's a pizza let me, box. Me, <laughs> it's a pizza box for Rolling Loud. So Rolling nice. Loud is um coming up, and mm -hmm. I got the Munchie VIP pack because um mm -hmm. why not? Right, um, and right. it came in this really cool packaging. Right. Um, and inside is like my wristband and all this stuff, but it came with like stickers. Oh, cool. This is like a just like a little decoration. I thought this was a soda. Mm -hmm. uh, my fat ass. And it came with like a t-shirt that looked like you work at like a pizza parlor mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like, oh my God. Like everything in this was just so cool. Uh I thought, I thought I was thinking to myself, like, okay, so now what package do the money plug need? Because if they if they doing like this, I definitely yes. got to step my game up. Like yeah. and, and I always like those boxes because that's one of the things that I want to do is um I want to do like gift boxes from everybody that's been on the show. It's like, hey, I would do a lovely gift box to anybody else. It'd be like fifty dollars for the gift box, but everybody just poured it like a sample of something, and to oh, make make it worth the fifty dollars. I don't have my I don't have my hoodie down here, but I'm thinking about just throwing a hoodie in there, Ooh. and a hoodie by itself is sixty five dollars, and and that's why I sell it on my show. And I was like, that would be pretty cool. So, like, even if you got a service, you could just say a card with a, uh, whatever your special code is or something mm -hmm. like that. Just like, you know what? Let's curate everybody. I'm like, hey, you know what? I want to do this for my my audience. Everybody just kind of send me a little sample of something and, let, and let's put it out there. Let's make it happen. Let's make, let's it, happen. make it happen. Let's right, make so it happen. <laughs> you shouldn't have told me because now every day I'm going to be like, all right, Anthony, what should you do for the box? Hey, where the box? <laughs> <at>? <laughs> Well, that's a really first, dope idea. Yeah, I need to figure out the box, like what it would look like. Like how you say you got the pizza box. Like, mm -hmm. what would it be for me? I would say a wallet. A wallet, right? But I don't think a wallet would be big. You know what? I could do a wallet with a lot of cards in there for for. <gasps> oh my god! Yes. Be yeah, really cool. All right, my eyes are getting small because of the alcoholic beverage. But... <laughs> <laughs> that was all I knew. Amsterdam, you pulled in there. Right. There you go. Right. Um. Oh, Tiff think it's a good idea. I wonder what Tiff would throw in there. She got merch. She does I have, have like I, I, and it's so funny because it's about to come back out. I only drop merch in like the winter time because mm. I'm obsessed with like hoodies. So I have like sweatshirts and this is like WWTMPD. What would the money plug do? Okay. <laughs> and then I have hats and then I usually got like coffee mugs because one of my first class one of my first fr frameworks for my class was cream or credit mm -hmm. rules everything around me cream right. check your credit and pay your fucking bills y'all so hey. i have it on like little hey. coffee mugs and right. t-shirts and stuff i just started really getting into all that but i was at fincon and i seen some of the stuff <laughs> that people had i said oh baby we oh. got we got some stuff our game up like <laughs> I was looking at all right. Um, so I do want to get into because I know we were talking about some uh some other cool things on here. I just want to say take a shout out to Tyson, thanks for joining, uh Sean for joining, um, and Coach James, thank you for joining. So one of the things is that uh they were giving out books. Did you pick up any books that they were what? giving? What I'm doing oh, okay. So I guess it's a nice time to invite you to my book club. Oh yeah, because I want to do a book club with all the books I got from right. FinCon, <laughs> and we're gonna talk about, and we can go live. All of us can go live yeah, and yeah. talk about the books and stuff like that. Let's make it happen. Yes. So 
the first book that I got, we you want to alternate these books because I got one and then you. I think this was one of the first books that I got. Shout out to Chris. Yes, um, Chris. I did. What's the Finlit guy? Mm-hmm. <laughs> guy? We got it. We in it because it. That's one of the YouTubers said it was the difference between followers and subscribers. I mean, followers mm. and supporters because there's a lot of followers, but so few uh, people that will support you. And I would say, you know what? I'm not going to just follow uh, Chris. I want to make sure I support him. Mm-hmm. And so for him to have his first book out there is awesome. Um, did he Did he write your little note on yours? Yes. Oh, my yeah, God. Well, let me tell you. And I'm going to call him out. And I hope he sees right. this too, Chris. Because he, he wasn't going to at first. He right. just handed me the book. And right. I paid for it. And I see him writing in somebody else's book. I said, yeah. ahem. <laughs> you write in my book. But it says, Marquia, thank you so much for your support and belief in me in this movement. Wish you nothing but the best. And then he signed it with his ad. So shout out to Aww. Chris. That was really yeah. dope. So in mine, it was very short because it was at the end of the day. We'll try to wrap up. He said, Anthony, thank you so much for your support and the belief in me. I really appreciate you, Chris. Yeah. All right. So we got that one down. Let's see. What's what's the next one? We're gonna I don't go have with? all of mine in here. Oh. Dang it. I do got a lot of them, though. Oh, here goes some more. All right. I got one. I'm going to do with this one. Okay. Um. So this one is called The Healthy... Uh, the healthy love and money way by Ed um, Ed Collins. Oh, isn't but that the know, guy that did the panel with? Oh my god, you know, he was fire. Yes, about it, I caught up with him in the prior um, thing, and what he said was like, you know what? I give up my book as my business card, and I was like, dude, can you write something in there so I can know who it is? <laughs> <laughs> so he said to Anthony, wish you. I, I can't even read his handwriting. Uh, I don't know. So great and success. Uh, my your experience finance. May your experience. Oh, may your experience. <laughs> you drunk. <laughs> you drunk. <laughs> so what I put on there, just so I can remember, I made sure I put in there hashtag uh, FinCon 2022 and, and when and also when I got it because knowing me, I'd be like, I don't know when I got this book and when I got it, but he's actually willing to come on the show. So. <gasps> I'm gonna, have him on the show. I'm gonna read the book first. He was like, "You don't gotta read the book, but read the book." And then I, was, he was like, "I'll come on anytime." I was like, "Oh my god!" I, okay, so now you gotta pass on his information because I want to talk to him too on TikTok Live. That'd be dope. Oh, so yeah. I got buy then build: How acquisition entrepreneurs outsmart the startup game. I, ah! up <laughs> <laughs> I cannot wait yeah. to read this. Like I was yes. just kind of like skimming through it. And mm-hmm. it was amazing. Like I was like, "Oh yeah, we de- we definitely going to get this." Right. All right, you up next. All right, let's see. Uh, this is my last book that I got from FinCon, and I picked this one up. <laughs> they didn't have no more. I'm gonna buy one. it. I'm gonna buy it. Oh book. no! Can you take a picture of that and put that in the uh, group yeah, chat okay. after this? Because <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. god, I wanted that book so bad. Yeah, because I was looking at this. They were just dumping it on the tables. If I would have known, I would pick you up an extra. Dang it, dang it. By the time I kept, somebody said they were on the table. And yeah. when I went in there to go grab one, they were gone. Oh, yeah. It was uh, me and somebody else. We were just reaching through the, the little thing while they were doing the recording. <laughs> we <were> <laughs> getting, getting the books. I was like, yeah, I'll take one of these. these and then, so this is my last one. The Exitpreneur's Playbook. Ooh. Reverse engineering your pathway to success. I want that one. All right, how about this? I'll trade you. I'll okay. read it, and then yeah. you read that one, and then we can switch. Right. Sounds good. All right, so I, I need to add this to the top of my list because I want to make sure I finish this before I mail it over. Like, Go. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. So this is the thing about it, this, guys. Like, FinCon. All right, so this will be... I, I know we run up on time, but I know, you know, you good. You good, right? Yeah, I ain't got nothing to do. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so one of the things I did say on here is like, because I know we talk about all the positives, but what is the cons about FinCon that you got? So for me, um, I feel like one of the cons was, um, I feel like going to all the booths, um, once they opened it up to everybody, a lot of the booths were empty. I never saw nobody at the booth. Um, and I really wanted to speak to the brand or speak with the brand and nobody was ever there or I felt extremely dismissed um, when I went to go talk to them. Um, it, was really, it was a really weird experience because um, everybody else was so welcome. But okay. um, yeah, that was one of the cons. And then for me, <laughs> I spent way too much money. That was the con. <laughs> 
And then that DJ at the tourist, the tacky tourist party, that was the yeah. biggest con. When he started playing Holla Bat Girl over top of the Thriller soundtrack, yeah. I was over it. I was like, oh, yeah, it's time we go to Big Ed. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is, one of the right before that last party, we were at the bar, me and um, this other guy, Cecil. Shout out to Cecil if you're watching this right now. Um, and it was uh, the other girl, I forgot her name. Um, Dex. I want to say her name is Dex. And what we were doing, we were just sitting there, and the guy was like, Yeah, y'all be back. It, it ain't that good anyway. And he was like, I would have bought you another round of drinks if I would have known y'all were part of FinCon. So that's one of the things I did was thinking about. But I was like, you know, I'm, it's my first time I want to experience it all and have a good time. Um, but I would say my con was I had, to, I had to say that it it felt like I didn't like how they overlapped everything so much, especially on that last Saturday. I was literally running from room to room, like, oh my god, I gotta get here. Oh my god, I gotta get here. Like, it was a, it was a lot. It was a lot that last day. Yeah, because I wanted to listen to Mindy Jensen because she was there, and I was like, Mindy from the pop, I mean not the pop, I keep saying pop finding, but from um, Bigger Pockets, she was there, and I was like, I really wanted to listen to her, but because we wanted to support everybody, you know, I was like, hey, somebody gonna get messed out. And um, and I'm not sure if I'm about to replay. That's one. I was my con is, and I hope Chris is watching this because I blamed him for absolutely no reason. But <laughs> I didn't get to meet all of the black creators. Like I didn't get you know connected with you guys until the end of FinCon, and yeah. I was like, dang, I missed Top Golf and all this other stuff. Like, man. oh, you didn't go to Top Golf? Mm -mm. I didn't get added into to the group chat until the very last day. Oh no! So, okay. but I'm already I'm ready yeah, now. You're, you're in there. I'm yeah, in yeah. there now. Yeah. yeah, um, I have to say that uh, one of the things that I, I do, I have to say, which was upsetting, was the when the chat, I mean when the app went down and they didn't have it paper copy. I was like, I had things planned out, but yeah, I'm sitting here at the meet and greet and still chatting. I'm like, I don't know what to do next. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I don't know. <laughs> Whose class is next? Yeah, that was that was a bummer too. Yeah, um, I think that was probably the last thing. Um, I actually do wish I had more pins because I was giving out pins um, randomly with my business cards. So these are like branded pins. Um, That's really somebody, cool. Yeah, somebody was like, "Oh, you fully branded." I was like, "Yeah." I'm at FinCon. Like, where else would I not be branded? <laughs> Facts. And it, I was so mad at myself. I guess that's something I'm going to learn to do better next year. I bought 200 business cards. Mm -hmm. All of my business cards were gone that first day. Everybody what? kept coming up to me like, you the girl with the credit cards? Can I have one? <laughs> <laughs> and so I ran out that first day. So, like, the second day, I felt really bad. But all I had was, like, a little QR code to show people. So yeah. I guess uh, next year, I'm definitely going to be a little bit more prepared. I'm going to bring 500 cards next year. So. Holla at your girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was I was parsing mine out because I kept running out of cards. Like, I would bring a little bit. Like, all right, now I can get through these. So I had to use the QR code on the back of my phone mm -hmm. in order to cover up, like you said. Just I'm telling you guys, if y'all ever go to FinCon, make sure you get your QR codes. Lock those joints in. Make sure you get your business cards ready. Like, I would say, you think 500 should be enough, right? Yeah, I definitely think 500 should be enough. Because, like, if I passed out 200 on the first day... Oh, yeah. Like well, technically it was day two. Like mm -hmm. I probably could have passed out. I could have lasted to the end uh, mm -hmm. if I had five hundred. I probably would have had a couple left over, but I would have been cool with that. Right. I, I know I got like a big bag of merch. This was my little goodie bag. Listen, I was going around. <laughs> I felt like Santa Claus carrying around that sack. <laughs> I know, right? Like, oh yeah, that's another thing. Please, when y'all go, make sure y'all bring enough, like an empty bag, because you get a lot of socks. Bro, self gave me like five <laughs> pairs of socks and like eight <laughs> t-shirts. I had no room in my suitcase. I was like, yeah, I'm done. And I had to pick up some avocado socks from uh, ah, I got the corn ones because the little boy on TikTok <laughs> with the corn. I got some corn right. ones and I got the oranges. Yeah, those are so cool. Um, and I got like a lot of like a lot of these bags. So Moo Moo, please, if y'all listening or watching, I'm gonna be sponsored. I'm gonna try to get Moo. Moo. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, we gotta get Moo Moo up in here. Um, oh yeah. yeah. I'm gonna ask them to see if they can come on the show. But obviously, I gotta make sure I fill out the form first and uh, 
get that in there. Um, who else? We had in here, I don't even know what this is. Enrich Your Life. Oh, money.com. I mean, they were doing okay. I didn't really stop by that booth. Nothing like that. I got this from the International Association of Registered Financial Consultants. Oh. Very durable bag. Yes. And it came with a tumbler. They came. Why are you giving those all that? Um, I met with Dr. Constance. She's mm-hmm. actually in the group chat, too. Um, yeah. She's from Baltimore. Shout chat. out 410. Yeah. Um, and she gave it to me along with like some, you know, literature and stuff for the company she works for and all that other stuff. But yeah. All right. I got some good stuff. <laughs> yeah, you did. She said y'all didn't read my article, lol. I tried to warn first time. But yeah. yeah, I didn't read it. <laughs> no, I didn't read it. But also, I didn't know who you were, Tiff. I'm sorry. I know now. I tell you that. <laughs> if you bringing the heat on Twitter, like how are you gonna bring the heat to that MLM group next door? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! But did she lie? No, but she did not. Lie. No lies. No lies in that joint. For you guys who don't know what MLM stands for, it stands for multi. Was it level marketing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's uh, it's pretty much just a pyramid scheme set up. Uh, so in order for you to make money, you gotta make sure you sell it to somebody else, and they. In order for them to make money, they do more. So, in other words, you don't have to do any real work to make money. But they've been around for like six years and only had three millionaires. And I was like, in FinCon, we had people who made millions, if not more, within the first two years. But yet they've been around for so long. Yeah, I couldn't end the show without talking about them. So I'm sorry. She said Mediavine had good brownies. Oh, the student loan planning people had cookies. Love oh, those me. cookies? Listen, I still <laughs> got some. Let me tell y'all, I was killing those cookies. Do y'all hear me? Those taxes cookies? Them things got me. <laughs> they got me through that 14-hour drive back home. I tell you that. Oh, no. You drove. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Why are you getting the QVC merch? <laughs> 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 you know. Don't, don't talk about my QVC. Hold on, hold on. You got your burlap sack. You gotta do that. You gotta do the hand. You gotta. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this was so much fun, Anthony. Like, awesome. oh my goodness. Like, yeah. you gotta everything watch. about this was dope. Like the how you have it segmented, the branding, the interactions. This was amazing. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you all so much. And we are coming up on the hour. So remember, everybody, make sure you follow. The money plug and all platforms. Make sure you get there. on TikTok. It's the money plug.co, which is my website. If any of y'all want, holla at me. You hey. know, I'm highly engaging on social media. Hey. Um, you know, holla at your girl, right? And uh, make sure y'all like, subscribe, share this. Um, I am definitely going to take the audio as is and put this up on the show. Um, so the podcast audio side of the house. So Make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe, and definitely share with friends if y'all found value in this. Because, you know, FinCon 2023 is going to be fire. Oh, yeah. You know, because we going in with the beads. I ain't bring the beads because I left them at at the hotel. No, I bought mine. I ain't even want to. I bought bought mine. I bought everything home. Do you hear me? I bought everything home. I was surprised I didn't take one of them little pool noodle things they had up in there. I thought about it. Right. I thought about it. You flayed that joint, bring it up in the back. (laughs) <laughs> I was gonna squeeze it down and put it in the throw it in the back of the van. Just right. <laughs> did you get one of those little uh, the flamingo floaty joints? I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Well, well, all right, everybody, y'all be safe as always. I'm out. Yes, everybody have a good one. All right, peace. <laughs>